Well, hello, my dear saying friends. It's Elisa here with Thoughtful Creativity. And today I do have for you nine sewing projects that will help you to be more eco-friendly, reduce some of the paper and plastic waste that you might have in your house, and, and of course, save you a buck or two because that's always a plus, at least in my book. Now, these projects are a combination of something that we've been doing for years, especially after moving closer to the nature here in Smoky Mountains, something that we're gonna try today together and see if it works, and a few of the projects that are still on my to-do list. So without any further ado, let's get started with the first one that I have right in front of me. All right, so the first project that we're gonna tackle together right away is going to be reusable dryer sheets. And I found instructions on beginnersewingprojects.com, which is a website that apparently has beginner sewing projects. So I will link all resources if they're necessary in the info box below. So the website calls for some flannel and some towel fabric. Now it calls for five inches by five inches squares. I have literally like crumbs left from my previous sewing projects that I made with this towel fabric. So we're gonna work with what we have. So basically the idea is that you cut five by five squares and then you put them wrong sides together and then you do a straight stitch and pretty much you're done. I'm gonna go a step further because I don't want my fabric fraying. I really cannot stand when it like tangles and knots and just ugh. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put them right sides together. I'm gonna serve them around, leave a little opening, turn these little dryer sheets right sides out and then I'm gonna stitch on the edges. That way the fabric doesn't move around and that's how I'm going to create my dryer sheets, but of course you can do whichever way is best for you. And I know the dryer sheets, especially in European country, and I'm European myself, are not really that common. Like I remember growing up, my mom never used any dryer sheets. Besides, we never used any dryers either. However, she did use highly scented laundry detergent. Now, for me, it's the opposite. We use a lot of laundry detergent that doesn't, doesn't have any scent to it whatsoever. However, we do have a toddler, then we do have about 30 chickens. So it is nice when clothes smell fresh. So we're gonna give this a try. Okay, people, my dryer sheets are ready. I only, I only managed to make three out of the leftover fabric that I had. So we're working with what we have. Now, the next step is to soak them in a solution of the mix between a vinegar, water, and some essential oils. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'm gonna run a load of laundry, which is on my to-do list today anyway. And I'm gonna report back to you if it actually works or not. Now, should I even put this on the list? I think I do. People use reusable tote bags instead of single-use plastic bags, especially when you go shopping. So make them and use them. Now, since we started to talk about shopping, you can also make your own little produce bags, which is pretty much just a drawstring bag that hasn't been made out of mesh material, so that way you can see through it and your produce can breathe. Now, I didn't have any mesh material at home. I didn't wanna buy anything specific for it, so I made mine out of plain muslin that I had quite a bit at home. Now, you can also use these for storing some of the fruits. Let's say you're going for you know, a walk or a picnic or anything like that. Usually, I would just stuff them in a Ziploc and take them with me so that way they wouldn't just bounce all around my purse. But in this case, you can also put them in a drawstring bag like that. One thing that I realized that when you have something that it's super convenient, a lot of times you start using it even more than necessary, like Ziploc bags. I mean, they're fantastic, I'm not gonna lie. They are, they are great. I love to have them in my craft room. However, a lot of times I feel that you're just using them because they're so convenient and in a lot of cases, you can do without them just fine. And a drawstring bag like that is a great solution for it. Now, it's really easy to make these. And here are some quick steps on how to do that. Take any size fabric that you need. And I will leave the size of my muslin bags in the info box below for you guys. Now, zigzag or serge the edges so that way it does not unravel after wash. Fold it in half. 
Then take one inch from the top of the bag and mark half an inch opening. You can also make an opening a little bit bigger, but that's where the string is gonna go. Now sew the bag all the way around, leaving the openings open. Then fold the edge like you see me do on a screen and with a straight stitch sew all the way around. Now, I usually do a little shortcut over here and I insert the ties right away, but you can do it after without a problem. Now, these ties are actually a ribbon from old gift bags. Now, when you stitch, make sure you don't catch the ties. And that's it. Once you're done, it's ready. Now, here's an important thing to understand. There are some smaller steps that we can take and some bigger steps that we can take in order to reduce some of the plastic and paper waste and any waste that we produce just by doing things on a day-to-day -day basis. Nobody is perfect. My family is not perfect either, but we try. We try one small step at a time because it all starts right here. You have to change your mindset in order to change your behavior. And once you start, even with the smaller steps, you then start thinking about how can you replace some single item use with things that you can use time and time again. Now this next project on my list is actually probably the easiest way how to reduce some of the paper waste in your house. And these are not handmade, these are actually store-bought, which is also great for the point that you don't have to make every single thing that I have on this list or any other list. You don't have to be pressured into making these. You can actually go out and buy some of these things, but it is great to use some of the fabric that you have in your stash. You had it for years. You don't have any upcoming projects for it, or maybe you fell out of love with this fabric. It is really good to get that fabric and put that into a good use. And these are just regular, plain, white, 100% cotton towels. That's really as easy as it is. These are really nice and porous, so that makes them really absorbent. They're great to use around the house. If you spilled something, if you need to tidy up something, you know, if you have kids, these are great, really. And you don't have to stop just at, you know, towels that you use around the house. You can go for some linen napkins. You can go for some linen handkerchiefs. I mean, you can really reduce some of the paper towel or paper product waste by replacing them with something that's made out of cloth that you can wash time and time again. And obviously a piece like this is just a square or a rectangle that you would hem and pretty much you're done. And big shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I've been partnering with them, if you haven't noticed, for quite some time and I absolutely love to work with them and to learn from Skillshare as an actual user because it is an online learning community that is centered all about learning. So there's no ads, which is really nice. Classes are well done, structure is great, and I've taken quite a few of them, and some will also have some takeaway materials like homework that you can do after the class so you can really anchor your learnings. And by the way, my dear sewing friends, some sewing classes also come with patterns, which is a really nice bonus. So you can learn everything and anything on Skillshare, like photography, music, marketing, you name it. So I usually go to Skillshare for art classes, that's my personal preference, but this week since we talk about eco-friendly projects, I decided to go for an embroidery class by Danielle Clough. She has a class that is named Painting with Thread for Beginners. So she shows how to create some amazing embroidery designs for beginners like me, and that could be such a great idea to give a second life to old clothing. So watch out, I might be doing some embroidery, so you can explore Skillshare too. First 1,000 subscribers to click on the link in the info box below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. I am a member myself and it's less than $10 per month with annual subscription. So it's a great deal. I love it and I think you will love it too. So I have a really great subscriber, her name is Christine, and now she has become a really wonderful friend. And she gave me this idea of making wax wraps. Now, I honestly opened my fridge a couple days in a row and really looking to see if we use that much of a plastic wrap, and we actually don't. Majority of the times we either put stuff in a Tupperware that we already have, and remember, being eco-friendly and sustainable is not about getting the next new shiny thing, it's also about using what you already have and using it 
to its best potential and the longest use possible. But if you are a person who is using a lot of plastic wrap in your kitchen, this could be a great substitute to that. It's really easy to make them a little messy, <laughs> but it's really easy to make them. So thank you so much, Christine, for this wonderful idea. Now I do have some tutorials for you guys. I will link them in the info box below. And all you really need to have is some beeswax. Some people use some additions of oils and um, other things and pretty much cotton fabric that you will be soaking in that beeswax to create that wax wrap. It's easy as that and that will definitely reduce some of the plastic wrap use in your kitchen. Makeup removal pads. These are absolutely great and I'm sure that you've seen some of these around the internet as well. Now these were a gift from my good friend Claire from Penguin and Pear YouTube channel so definitely check her out. She has a wonderful tutorial on how to make these. I will leave all the information in the info box below for you guys. But these are a great way how to reduce some of the waste that might occur after you take some of your makeup off. All right, so while we're talking about the bathroom, let's stay right there. And this next project is not necessarily going to cut down on some of your plastic or paper waste, but it will save your soap, <laughs> which in fact will save some of your dollars. Now, as I said, I grew up back in Europe and both of my Russian grandparents used to have these when we would go to Banya, which is Russian sauna. Now, back in the day, I would, from what I remember being a child, these were knit or crocheted and um, these were made from almost like a twine material, really rough. And then my grandparents would use it as a washcloth and after the Banya was done, they would use this to store the soap in order to prevent it melting away anywhere else, which is great because that's what happens when my husband leaves the soap on the edge of the bathtub just sitting right there, it just melts away. <laughs> so I hope that this will solve the problem and be a two-in-one useful thing. This is also great for gifts as well. If you make your handmade soap and you make one of these, this could be a great Christmas gift. Now, if you are a member of this channel, then I do have a template for this little pouch, which is really easy to create. Now, if you're not sure what memberships are all about, you can click on the join button next to subscribe button. It will show you a little trailer and tell you what the memberships are all about so you can see if this is something that's for you. Now here's another item that you can use in your kitchen, make it yourself, sew it yourself and reduce some of the plastic wrap waste in your kitchen. Now again, for me, it's not necessarily a solution because we don't use plastic wrap in this kind of way. And if we need to cover a bowl, majority of the times we just use a plate that goes on top of it and that's just about it. However, if you do like to have some plastic cover on top of your bowl, you can make an elasticated bowl cover, which is pretty much, imagine like you're making a shower cap. That's exactly the same thing. It's just gonna go on top of your bowl. Easy to make, comes together in about, I would say 10, 15 minutes. And this one is from DIY Mommy and she has a wonderful tutorial on how to make these. So I will leave the link for you in the info box below. Now this next item is a little bit closer to a traditional snack bag that you think of when you need to put your food somewhere to take it with you. Now I'm not necessarily 100% sure how I feel about it because you do have to line it with plastic, then you have to make sure that it fuses, but you might really find it useful. So it's pretty much a snack bag like this. This is not a snack bag. This is one of the mini wallets that I made some time ago, but the idea is exactly the same. You put some Velcro over here and over here, and then you would need to line it with some plastic as well. And usually you would make it out of cotton and then you sew it either into a rectangle or a square. And then you have a little snack bag that closes and opens up and you can put your sandwich or any other snacks inside. I will find some tutorials for you how to make a proper one and I will leave it for you guys in the info box below as well. All right, well, I do have another video for you guys because if you did like this one, you will love this 10 item video of what you can sew and sell. And if you're not planning on selling anything that you sew, these are actually really great for gifts as well for the Christmas season this year. So definitely check it out right over here. Thank you so much for watching. Happy sewing, happy eco-friendly living, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.